All right, what's up? We got another new chapter of One Piece, reading these on back-to-back -back days. A rare treat, maybe, overwhelming experience, maybe. This one starts off with a very fun color spread showing the Stella uh, with Vegapunk in the center and all of these brain children in the most literal sets sprouting out of him. Not the scale. <laughs> I really like these characters. I wish we got even more time to uh, have fun with them. Some of them are down for the count. One of them is evil. I think uh, just kind of seeing a whole arc unfold with... Um, like, imagine this was an arc that took place way earlier in One Piece. Before there was so many interwoven plot lines and so many threats that are relevant and... So much endgame action happening, coalescing so many stories. It might look something like Luffy shows up at the island, the Stella system is in place, we get a couple chapters, seeing how things operate, some mysteries, maybe the crew got separated, there's some hijinks. Uh, then a threat emerges, maybe it's still York betraying the rest of the Stella. Um, and maybe letting loose some, like, technological terrors, uh, gigantic robots rampaging through the lab, trying to capture Vegapunk and the rest of the Stellas. Uh, the Straw Hats team up maybe one-to-one -one with the different Stella systems, because, you know, this is earlier in the plot. Hypothetically, the Straw Hat crew isn't as big. And then they square off against, uh, York's, uh, villainous reign. And it's like 20 chapters. <laughs> um, it's it's like very low-key, very simple, very comfy, very silly. Uh, that sounds good too. <laughs> it's like interesting to kind of think about these ideas and how they would have unfolded in different areas of the story. Um, but yeah, I just, I just love how fresh this all is. That even a thousand and one hundred chapters in, they just have this whole new aesthetic, this whole new type of color scheme. Um, it's Egghead, baby. We're, we're heading into the finale, maybe. Okay, so. This is strange. The robot Kuma, who has no free will left. His, his pupils have left his eyes. He is no wear longer wearing a charming pair of dad-type glasses, but instead is full machine, has arrived at Mount Corvo, where Luffy has been training non-stop every day. We see him here whipping out the gum gum axe that would one day defeat Arlong, scaring away the wildlife. Kuma watches on, remembers Dragon, traveling to a little village at the end of the country and watching a particular young lad. Keep going if you want to see me killed. Children are a vulnerability for any parent. Hmm, hmm. So, wait, no, Kuma, Kuma isn't fully robot yet. Kuma isn't, I, I just saw his eyes now, and I remembered that, yes, this is the, the phase in which he is being robotified, but he still has free will memories and stuff, so this isn't such a shocker that he remembers this conversation with Dragon. And this, of course, creates a major contrast between Dragon and Kuma, where Kuma, indeed, uh, was, like, exploited. His major vulnerability was that he cared more about Bonnie's treatment than any aspect of the revolutionary cause. Okay. Luffy talking to himself... Times when they get beat or captured, when that happens, I won't hold back. I'll give them a gum gum axe no matter who it is. Yeah, yeah, this is what happened with Nami. Now, like, I don't know. I, I have generally this sort of hesitancy around when stories like to do these sorts of flashbacks. Um, I think probably the worst for it is, like, Star Wars, that... They looked at stuff that happened in the original trilogy, in the movies that came out in the 70s and 80s, and then when they were making the prequel trilogy, uh, like 30 years later, they were obsessed with taking little details that at, didn't really need explanation, that were just there in the original trilogy, and being like, see, 
Now that's the origin of that little thing that was on the Millennium Falcon, or that's the origin of why Han Solo says that thing, or why Obi-Wan Kenobi referred to this thing, or whatever. See, see, and it's just like really insistent and nagging and makes the the new thing just seem like it's subservient to the old thing and couldn't possibly be better, but instead just uh, rewards you and pats you on the back. You paid so much attention to that other thing. Wasn't that other thing so good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here, do you remember this thing too? Wow. Yeah, you're cool. You're cool. We're all cool. Um, so I don't know. When I'm like pointing out references and stuff like this, I, I kind of get a twinge of that. But I have to acknowledge that what's going on here is just my own hyper nerdy obsession with One Piece being triggered. <laughs> and that really, if I imagined not recognizing these things and not needing to like situate all this stuff in the timeline and, and figure out how all this stuff connects, it still feels very natural. It doesn't feel like it's distracting from the forward momentum of the plot, right? Like it's just what Luffy would really be doing. Uh, anyways, I don't know. Um, I'm very, very curious where this is going to go. Luffy detects Kuma. This is right around when he's going to set sail, age 16. That is when he starts his adventure. So I wonder if Kuma delayed his adventure a little bit by making Luffy hunt for this phantom menace. Star Wars! <laughs> Um, Kuma saving the ship that was attacked, going after the pirates that attacked it. The world government not interested in him helping people, but only taking down pirates that are annoying and destabilizing to the economy. The world is full of more beautiful and wondrous sights than any book or picture could describe. I wish I could see you react to them, Bonnie. Bonnie, of course, waiting minute by minute for a letter from Kuma. Freaking out. Letters are supposed to take a long time. Bonnie looking even more childish than normal? I don't know. I think she keeps, like, messing with her age. Uh, for, for kicks. A newspaper and a letter. Uh, friggin' CV. Friggin' Alpha. <laughs> I should have known a person with such a terrible name would be so terrible. Friggin' Alpha. Cypher pool, never good. Ripping up letter after letter after letter. Brutal. It's little things like this, you know? It's not the most tragic thing that happened in One Piece. Not even top ten, maybe. But it's so real. So down to earth and real. Just this massive disconnect between Kuma's best intentions and Bonnie's disappointment and this totally devaluing evil lady ugh what a sap ugh, ugh. here we see Bonnie getting strong using her fruit powers in weird ways to battle it out she looks like a giantess mm hmm good good She's, she seems so abusive here, making Bonnie take this disgusting fake medicine. I mean, I'm sure Bonnie would worry more if she wasn't taking any sort of medicine. Like, the medicine is probably reassuring insofar as Bonnie thinks, oh yeah, this is the treatment. But it's like, you don't have to do that. You could at least give her a sweet placebo. The way she's grinning there. I hate this lady. I can't wait for Bonnie to... Figure out what's going on, get pissed off, and beat the crap out of her. Ooh, okay. Meanwhile, back at the lab. This other fun futuristic island. 
we see that uh, it looks, it's hard to tell. Yeah, his, his brain has now been uh, transmitted into the Stella. Oh, talking to Stussy. Clone with her own will or a real human with none. Hmm. I'll make certain you can maintain a bare minimum of consciousness brought right up until before the end. So Kuma has another year in which he's still conscious. He's still thinking. Even though uh, he would... He has to follow orders 100% of the time. Okay, okay. Keep sending them for as long as I can. I love Bonnie. I have another year to write out an entire life's worth of emotions to her. Nice. Having a big birthday party for her. Connie's huge pizzas. Her favorite food. So sad, though. So sad. Like I said, you know, it's not it's not up there with like Law's internal uh, entire orphanage getting burned down because they all have a extremely transmittable disease, or you know, Cora's backstory, or really anything that happens in Dressrosa. It's not as sad as Nami being in prison since a young age, being forced to draw maps knowing that the life of her family and everything she loves hangs on the balance. <clears throat> There's sadder things, but this is sad too. It's just such a simple tragedy. Half a year passed without a single letter reaching her. Here we have Baltigo, which I kept thinking was the name of the other island I got mixed up. Kuma still out there helping the Revolutionary Army. Sure, he has his reasons. Once he can't tell us. Daybunk said I'd be better in a year, and it's been a year now. Okay, is this when Bonnie ma happens to run out, intercepting a letter, <clears throat> realizing they've been coming the whole time? Beats the crap out of Alpha. I don't know, yeah, this is just sort of this this general tragedy of, of absence, of, of being unable to communicate. The, the Revolutionary Army is sad, they don't understand what Kuma's doing, he's helping them, and yet, Bonnie doesn't understand what Kuma's doing either, because all the letters are being destroyed, and she's sort of happy, and she's getting better, but yet... They're drinking in town, and someone lets slip that your disease is already fully cured. No sense they keep you locked inside for another half a year when you're all healthy now. Doesn't make sense that Kuma wouldn't write a single letter either. Go to Harvard, go to sea and find your father. This is how her pirate adventure starts. This is her crew that she arranges. This old lady's so nice. Legendary ruffian fishers who strike fear into beef pirates and beasts alike. They'll help you reach Kuma. Gyogyo, of course, I think is the burly, mustached man that we always see hanging out with Bonnie. <clears throat> ah, and then she ages herself up. Switcheroos. Uh, I mean, uh, she's not going to be the crap out of Alpha. How disappointing. <laughs> Decorated the ship like a pizza. This is their flag, I guess, because they're the legendary fishermen. They got the fish bones, skull and crossbones. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> the start of Bonnie's adventure. And this is really interesting. We haven't seen 
too much of Bonnie's power, really. Because we haven't really seen her properly fight. She just kind of uses it to get out of jams. But here, this is so interesting that it as well has strange rubbery properties just based on aging herself up into different potential futures, I guess. Distorted futures. Because, yeah, it doesn't make sense that she just ages up and looks one particular way. She also has an insanely bizarre paramecia fruit that can change her body in, in all sorts of almost logia-esque ways, while also having this almost awakening type effect where it can age and de-age other people. Could it be that the gum gum fruit isn't the only, like, mythological fruit that carries on the will of these ancient gods? I don't know, is that what being, is that what's being suggested here? Also, I like that Alpha got beaten up! Awful, awful lady. Friggin' Alpha. Stupid ass name. Alright! This is exciting. I, we're, we like, all the pieces are in place now. I don't think there's anything more that this flashback needs to cover, right? Bonnie sets out trying to figure out what happened to Kuma. This leads to all of her myriad adventures, of which we have seen glimpses. She ends up at Saba Odi. She ends up getting captured by Blackbeard. She ends up being negotiated with the government. Uh, she ends up escaping that. She ends up at Egghead, right? All of that is pretty clear. And meanwhile, Kuma, we know that he just has this flickering, flading light of consciousness. He tries to help out the Revolutionary Army as much as he can. He also shows up at Saba Odi. He shows up at Thriller Bark. He's doing these things that are... Uh, on the surface, the orders of the world government, but underneath, um, secretly trying to help people he cares about. Uh, he, he recognizes Luffy from way back in the day. Um, he, he ends up, you know, doing this and that, but then currently is heading like a bat out of hell straight to Egghead. And that's where everything is now unfolding in the present day. So this might be the end of the flashback. Okay, good stuff. Let's look forward to next week.